So what I'm going to attempt is the neat trick of getting something from not very much. I'm going to start my body by my infinite plane into a perfectly reflecting mirror. I'm going to turn off the sun because I don't need that to be participating in this. I'm going to take that mirror and I'm going to turn it on edge like so and just slide it up to the front of the camera. I'm now going to copy and paste that mirror, drag it back a bit, modify the material on that and turn this into a lens that's going to straighten out my light rays and then I'm going to copy and paste that lens, modify that, turn it back into a perfectly reflecting mirror and I'm going to use some bump in this I'll make that minus 200 okay and I'll go for from basic this basic distance origin now I'll, I'll take the grid simple it doesn't really matter because what I'm going to do is modify this so that it's got nothing in the filter in the noise I'm going to choose instead of techno distance squared take the octaves down to zero leave the frequency at 60 and then in the final combination I'm going to add some phase spots uh, 3D about 21 I'll leave the frequency the same so that's leaving the frequency at 600 odd so if you were to use the same components then you would have the same frequency settings like 60 there and uh, there is no phase in the in this in this uh, component but there is in the final combination which I've added so hopefully that the spots here are going to break the surface up so we'll just check out of there so that's my effect I'm not seeing much effect of the phase yet but let's see no I don't want spots I want sign what I was talking about let's that'll do that's it I can see it's because it comes out spotty on there I was thinking of spots check out of there switch to my main view and have a quick render so what we've got now is haze that's trapped between these surfaces is getting caught on these reflections trapped in the surface because the bumps over its usual level and then we get an interaction between these different layers so if I turn the maximum ray depth up now so we're getting more interaction between these two surfaces and then I can use I can use this position of this to tune the effect and to position the lenses as well so you can see at the moment it looks rather fine so I'm going to go to the mirror with the dimples on and change it from world space to object space that should modify my frequency a little bit okay and you can see now we're getting a bit more interaction between the surfaces so if I get hold of this lens plane and then move it on the z-axis you'll see that that has an effect on the appearance of this pattern as well so I can by moving that I can change the focus of the pattern it, it's not a very bright pattern but that that could be brightened by increasing the thickness of the haze which bring more haze into this gap so that'll be more for this to interact with so we'll do that a little bit we can modify it in here in the atmosphere use rendering scene we could take thickness and density up so you can see how in the preview it's lighting this up okay so that's probably a bit too much so I'll lower that down we can use if we say colored the Sun even though the Sun's not a light source we can blend with the haze and then use that to color the light provided through the haze channel which can be a nice effect so just by moving the position of the Sun getting it to interact with the haze get different effects I'm just looking at the nano preview here so like so so that's changed the tint of that if we want to enlarge this still further I have to find the effect plane with the dimples on again and then lower its frequency there and then we'll see larger patterns so that's a bit a bit extreme probably zoom in get hold of this surface here which is a lens surface bring that out a bit that'll change the interaction so you can see it already looks quite complex now I think I've got too much haze still so I'll lower the haze down 
so I can get a nice bit of contrast grow going between these. I'll widen my field of view so I can get more pattern in. And you can see now, after five minutes, I've already managed to generate quite an interesting and complex looking pattern. Uh, one final embellishment you might do is from the mirror side of things, you could use the diffuse colour here through metallicity to tint the reflected light. So you can see now this is the, the primary source and this is the secondary one so this has been tinted. Now if you do this subtly and not in an extreme way like I did just there so it's got a bit of each colour in but it goes towards one colour then you can have a nice transition. The thing is though th the reflections get dimmer now if you look on Horro's uh, website and I think I'll try and remember to provide a link then what you can do is overdrive the reflection effect with a hypertexture. This is a phased hypertexture, so this is a little bit more controllable, and it allows you to go over 100 reflection. So if I take it about 22, that's actually over 100 because this is a highly boosted output. So this means that the reflections now, instead of diminishing, uh, sort of resonate and they get each one amplifies the other in a sort of feedback loop and so that they can add up and you get this nice bright area and as a final thing then for final rendering I'll use the anti-aliasing option and use more anti-alias rays to get a better sampling level and then that'll be less noise in the final image so that, well that's the end of it really it's just really a quick recipe to sort of share with you this idea I had to try and replicate some kind of uh, chaotic generation process uh, not mathematically in this case but using Bryce's render engine and some mirrors to create sort of an interesting self-referential fractal like pattern from uh, from its own procedural generation uh, engine and uh, the ability to drive the bump effect and the fact that the bump effect when it's overdriven breaks and it takes uh, an incidence ray off right at, at 90 degrees to the surface which is how it's picking up these very bright areas even though they're infinitely distant well mathematically infinitely distant between the two infinite planes anyway it's just something to play with so i uh, hope you found that interesting and fun and that you'll have a go with this in bryce 7.1 pro cheers now oh look it's nearly finished rendering bonus just let it run a little bit longer there you go you see it didn't take that long to render after all did it it looks quite good.